Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Jonas Yantan with the evening news. The headlines. Chief Minister Nipiru files nomination for the upcoming state assembly elections. Several intending candidates filed nominations. President Draupadi Murmu says telecom sector has a crucial role in advancing digital connectivity. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges global investors to explore investment opportunities in India's energy sector. And Congress appeals to people of Nagaland to vote wisely. Now the news in detail. Nagaland Chief Minister and intending NTPP candidate from 11 North Nangami II Assembly Constituency, Nipirio, filed his nomination papers today at the office of the additional Deputy Commissioner, Chibabozo. Talking to a section of media persons after filing his nomination, Rio expressed confidence that the alliance between the NDPP and the BJP will come back to power and form the government. Rio also thanked the people of his constituency for putting their trust in him thus far and further sought their blessings and support again. On being asked on his opponent from Congress party, Rio said he respects every candidate and that good saints will prevail. He also informed that the list of the star campaigners and the party's manifesto will be out soon, adding that along with the alliance partner BJP, they are pinging out with a common minimum program. Rio said top agenda of party's manifesto will be towards excellence. Chief Minister Rio further informed that Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah will be arriving in the state in the second or third week of this month for campaigning. A total of 45 candidates filed the nominations today for the forthcoming state assembly elections till the time of filing this report. This includes 12 candidates from Peck, 8 from Dimapu, 7 from Woka, 6 from Longling, 5 from Zunapudo, 3 from Beren, 3 from Jumukedima, and 1 candidate from Zeminu. Deputy Chief Minister and BJP candidate Yantungo Baden filed his nomination before the returning officer, 37 D Assembly constituency. Former Chief Minister and NDPP candidate Dia Zeliang filed his nominations from 7 Beren Assembly constituency. Minister for Planning and Coordination Niba Grono from NDPP filed his nomination for 16 Futsuro Assembly constituency. Health Minister S. Pangyapom of NDPP filed his nomination for 50 Longling. Minister Agriculture and NDPP candidate G. Kaido Aye filed his nomination in 36 Sadaka. Advisor for Power W. Hodo Ayemi from BJP Party filed his nomination from Dimapu 1. Former Rajya Sabha member K. G. Gene from NDPP Chodisa Sazo and Yitacho from LJP and NPF Secretary General Achambemo Gikon filed their nominations. JDU candidate Imse Mungba, Pongen Kashedo Yiptomi from Republic Party of India and Congress candidate Agavi N. Zumomi, all from 4 Kaspani 1 Assembly constituency, filed the nomination papers. Two women candidates also filed the nominations today. Hikani Chakalu from NTPP and Kahuli Sema of BJP filed their nominations from Dimapu 3 and 32 Adweza respectively. Filing of nomination will end tomorrow. President Draupadi Murmu said that the telecom sector has a crucial role in advancing digital connectivity for achieving rapid economic progress. She said this while addressing the officer trainees of Indian Post and Telecommunication Accounts and Finance Service in New Delhi today. President Murmo said the Digital India Initiative is helping the government deliver various public services with more efficiency and transparency. She has stressed on the need to continue to strive to connect the still unconnected masses, especially in the rural and remote areas. Addressing the officers of the Indian Naval Material Management Service, the President said that the Indian Navy has been successfully safeguarding the maritime interest, trade routes and providing assistance during times of crisis. She said as members of Indian Naval Material Management Service, they would hold the key responsibilities in ensuring availability of critical supplies to naval ships, submarines and aircrafts. Addressing the officers of Central Engineering Service, Roads, President Murmu said that connectivity and road infrastructure is vital 
for the economic growth and development of a nation. She said in recent years, the government has taken several initiatives to build new highways and upgrade the existing ones. Murmo urged them to in- innovate and implement the best engineering and technological solutions to minimize road accidents. This news comes to you from All India Radio, Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News on Air app and YouTube channel AIA News Kohima. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the India Energy Week 2023 at Bengaluru in Karnataka today. Speaking at the event, Prime Minister urged global investors to explore investment opportunities in India's energy sector. Modi said India is one of the strongest voices in the world in energy transition. He said the government is working on a mission mode to increase natural gas consumption in India's energy mix by 2030. Prime Minister said India has fourth largest crude refining capacity in the world. Modi said India is moving towards target of 20% ethanol blending with petrol. Prime Minister also launched the twin cooktop model of the Indian oil's indo-solar cooking system and flagged off its commercial rollout. Modi said the solar cooktop launched today is going to give a new dimension to green and clean cooking in India. Congress has appealed to the people of Nagaland to vote wisely in this upcoming state general election. Addressing media persons at Congress Pawan Kohima today, Chairperson Media and Publicity Department AICC Pawan Kera alleged that for the last 20 years, NDPP, NPF and BJP together looted the state. He said it is time for the people to wake up and think of the unfulfilled promises made by the present government and call the people to vote for the Congress party. Highlighting the failures of the present government, Kera alleged that the PM Modi's government could not fulfil its promises, which was solution before election. He also maintained that as long as Nipirio remains as chief minister, there will be no solution, adding that it was he who has attempted at steering the trust of Nagalin towards PM Modi. Kera further alleged that the announcement made by Amit Shah to create frontier Naga territory for the eastern Nagaland is another false promise just to get vote for the BJP in this ensuing assembly election. Kera said such endorsement at this stage is a brazen violation of the model code of conduct. Rajya Sabha MP and National Returning Officer of Janata Dal United, JTU, Anil Prasad Hekde, launched the party election manifesto at Zeminu today. Hekde said the JTU has a democratic and socialist ideology and is always concerned about Nagaland. He mentioned that a failure to resolve Naga political issue is the root of political instability and its resolution is fundamental for lasting peace in the state. Hekde appealed for unity among the Nagas and added that some anti-democratic forces want to prolong the unrest by keeping Nagas divided. JDU candidate from 12 Juenga Sep said that JDU is the most secular political party in the country and gives the highest regards to women reservation. Sep shared his vision for a transformative, progressive and resilient district and added that the politics of ism has long stagnated the social, economic and financial status of the people. Sep further added that development should not divide but unite people. And now on 20 News, here are the main points again. Chief Minister Nipirio files nomination for the upcoming state assembly elections. Several intending candidates filed a nomination. President Draupadi Murmu says the telecom sector has a crucial role in advancing digital connectivity. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges global investors to explore investment opportunities in India's energy sector. And Congress appeals to people of Nagaland to vote wisely. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.